Um, it's been quite a few months since my last vlog, I think. Uh, definitely a lot happened since then. Uh, well, I've written about on my regular blog, obviously. Um, yeah, just finding a new place and everything, it's been horrible. But I've also learned quite a lot, I hope, I think, in a... <laughs> In the meantime, and maybe I'm a better person because of it, maybe, I don't know. Just, um, well, these video looks, I guess, why did I start them? It's been years since I did the first one and I guess it was mostly just to talk with people in a way, like beyond just the text of my, uh, of my blogs. Because I mean, uh, you can say that's what's the difference really whether you're talking or whether you're writing. It's practically the same thing, right? Um, no, because words don't capture everything. That's really the, that's the essence, I think. And based on the responses I get from people as well, when they're. Yeah, when I have viewed some of my vlogs or all of them, I mean there are some people, <laughs> and they then comment on it and they're like, the, the way they comment on this is very different from when they comment on my blogs because I guess it's just this whole, like, I mean, you, you can see me, I'm a person, I mean, this is not some kind of computer-based simulation, I think, probably, you never know for sure. <laughs> it's, it's more direct in a way because text is just text in the end and seeing, seeing and hearing an actual person that's still different and I think that's probably a good reason for me to just continue doing them also I, I noticed it when before I started doing a vlog like okay um, this is the first real opportunity I actually have to do vlogs again because now I have a new place <sighs> hope this <laughs> this is really it like I mean okay I have the place I'm paying for it so uh, yes it's mine but still you never know I mean <laughs> uh, you know long story um, yeah I think it's really helpful to just do them again just to talk about things and yes yeah, so, I mean you've got to talk with, with friends you talk with therapists and everything but I mean we still got television, we still got YouTube, we still got so many things which are not just talking with people and um, like friends, you know, people in your direct environment or things like that. And that is really different in a way that it's like those communities on YouTube and things. It's, it's, it's you reach this bigger audience and uh, it, yeah, definitely different and worth it, I think. So, but it's, of course, uh, I'm just going to waffle like this all the time. Um, one thing I was really just, well, when I was doing the, the sound test, because this is, obviously, this is my uh, bedroom. I think that's slightly obvious, maybe. Uh, maybe some hints here that gave it away. But I was doing some sound tests to see whether uh, it's not too echoey. I don't think it's too echoey. I mean, if it's too echoey, I mean, I will correct it in the next video. Sorry about that. Uh, deal with it for now. So, when I was doing those, um, those sound tests, of course, also with video, and I was watching it back and just looking at myself and just doing it uh, just without a bit of um, extra lighting, and I was looking at myself in videos and it was like, wow. What the hell are you even? Like the, the lines in my face, those hard lines and everything. And I was sure if it was just projecting, of course, in my mind, because that's one of those really fun things which I've had uh, for a long time. Um, like I think I wrote about it in my blog like many years ago. You know, this uh, way in the beginning, 2007 it must have been, when I was first just uh, figuring out, just, um, well, figure out the difference between what I thought I saw in the mirror and actually what my body was really like. And just standing in front of the mirror and seeing this like this, my face in the mirror and then suddenly like just shifting away and seeing the real me suddenly. 
it sounds insane, it sounds like something from a movie, but that's pretty much like this whole projection thing, which you do just with your mind, you've got this picture of yourself, you build up this uh, this image, this, like, this is what I look like, this is who I am, this is what I am, and that is, I mean, reality be damned. <laughs> just, you just take this image and you just project it, you like, you force it, right? This is what comes what comes in into your eyes and this is what comes out of your mind. It's like, no, that is reality. But you can also just allow this reality to just get in there for a chance and really look at, okay, that's what they look like. That is where I am. And I think this, when I was doing the sound test, I wasn't feeling like 100%, but like, yeah, I don't know. This, and that, those are the moments when when this projection happens more easily, even with, without you really realizing it. And it's just, um, yeah, it's complicated, but it's really, it, it makes you feel uncertain in many ways. And I mean, obviously, like one of the things you learn when you actually start doing real video recording is that hey lighting is essential like if you do not have proper lighting you may as well just not record it because light is everything okay sounds also important but lighting and i'm trying out a new setup here so uh, we'll be fixed in the next video if there anything is horribly wrong I guess, I mean, feel free to complain and things. And yeah, I mean, the, the past days, past days, past weeks, months have been quite a struggle just with just moving out of uh, the old place where I'd lived for like five or six years. And now just getting my stuff back here in the new place and just digging through it and like, it's kind of being confronted with past me. It wasn't really me. It was this really depressed, dark and unhappy person. And I mean, okay, well, I do not want to say that I'm really cheerful and happy and everything right now, but I'm not that person anymore. And just dealing with the, the old stuff and just still kind of remembering um, how I was feeling back then with this, this whole of, uh, yeah, I don't care, it doesn't really matter and just uh, because you have no idea what's going to happen and everything and starting to depression and dealing with uh, with whole PTSD stuff and everything. It's no fun, just cannot recommend it. So... It's just... The, the essential part really is just that, um, how do you put it, I had something prepared obviously, but uh, I'm doing this completely just uh, off the cuff, just like that. Uh, if you want me to use a teleprompter or something to ruffle less, then uh, feel free to recommend it, feel free to donate to me. I mean, <laughs> uh, always welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but you know this uh, self-image I guess that's really the point that I was going for that um, the, the way you look at yourself the image you form of yourself and how that affects them because um, what I noticed really with, this, with those uh, sound tests I did on those videos just looking at myself and seeing this like Previously, I would look in the mirror, and of course, in the bathroom, I just washing my hands, and she like, okay, that looks okay. But then you see yourself on those videos, those uh, those brief clips where you're doing the sound test with a few different configurations, and you're like, it's this 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 panicky, withdrawn uh, person. Like, who is that even? Like, you, you can barely see the person. Yeah, when you look at your own eyes, well, we need a video. I think it was me, and you look at those eyes, and you're like. I barely see a person in there. It's just like the person is completely withdrawn. It's isn't really there anymore. And I think that that person, like I've saw the person I saw in those videos, was basically also me uh, last year during those job interviews and all the time before that and my last job and everything. And the summer it's 
kind of clicks with how people then looked at you, responded to you and things like that. It's kind of begins to make a bit of sense there. Like you, you just, like because you got this whole distance going between this, uh, like this image of yourself, like this is me, this is how I, but the outside world sees this other person. I mean, um, I think right now I'm pretty much that person that I want to be, like the person, or the person I am, the person I really just want to force on the world because hey, this is me and not that other person who people thought I was or something because I've had so many for the past years and months, there's so many remarks and things happening it really makes you question about what you are, who you are, how people really look at you. I mean, of course, obviously, with the whole intersect thing, that uh, you got I mean, people condemning you um, for being a freak, not just doctors and um, some random people. You know, some some guy who really liked you and uh, thought you were like, oh my god, they want to get into her pants, and then he finds out that, oh my god, you're intersex, and you have extra bits, and like, oh my god, you're a freak of nature, and they don't ever want to see you again. Yes, or well, the male form of the doctor being like, uh, yeah, you're intersex, uh, I feel disgusted by you, I don't want to have you as a patient. I mean, that's the other uh, thing you often have, and um, also people are not really just getting my behavior, which, <laughs> kind of makes sense because I don't often get my own behavior either. You know, there's more just subconscious things with uh, the way you react to things, not so much that when you think about things, like obviously that's not how you would do it, but when you're put in a situation and you have to respond like now, 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 then things like this is part of you, this, this kind of not really you, I don't really understand it. It's like a, this, this traumatized part of you that just uh, has to less out and uh, or and well and or retreat and just be really weird and not social and unpleasant and yeah uh, you have to find yourself in a struggling to go with just being in this, these dark moods where you that's other person, the this this dark, well, this depression basically. It's basically just a depression. It's like, it's you, but uh, depressed and just struggling through lots of emotional loops and fears and terrors and uh, add a few sprinkles of uh, extra sparkly terrors and uh, it's been really fun. In my past blogs, I've, uh, I've written a bit about uh, more about the things I remember of me being um, physically, sexually abused as a, as a young child, and just how that affects me, how how it has very likely um, literally transformed my brain, in the sense that um, it has made my brain adapted to a high threat environment, as in everything around me is likely to be a threat. I expect everything to be a threat and there will always be a threat somewhere, some point, because that's how it was back then and yeah, that's, uh, that will not change. And that's kind of the scenario with uh, my brain has, uh, like with the, this whole fight or flight, uh, fight or flight, a response has been tweaked for such situations and obviously if you're not in high threat situations then your response are like <laughs> completely wrong because um, but understanding that just it's a lot of self-knowledge and just going to terms with okay well okay, maybe the outside world is also wrong on lots of counts but my brain is also kind of weird and um, accepting that is important and that's something I have to deal with and I am dealing with it. I mean, I do have a therapist uh, also to help with stuff like that and I've got some good friends who just help to just make me reflect and balance things out and um, I really appreciate now being in a situation where I don't have to take those 
immediate decisions but I can actually just let it settle for a bit and just think about it rationally and not feeling like I'm in this, um, this super stressful urgent high stress uh, and high threat situation anymore and I think that might be really helpful with just tweaking things and I mean uh, neuroplasticity is still a thing even in adults so it's fixable in some way and I will get better and I definitely hope that uh, by just being able to communicate more uh, efficiently, effectively with uh, with other people and that my behavior more matches up with what other people expect that um, interactions will go a bit smoother because I mean um, some ridiculous stuff uh, happening this year with me being accused of uh, some like hating certain minorities in uh, in society when <laughs> that's that's this is ridiculous. That's first of all, I don't have the time or the or the inclination to to bother with hating people because I mean, I'm occupied with myself, not in the the selfish way of I don't care about other people, but more in the I'm in a lot of pain and I'm still struggling to piece myself back together after those. Um, decades of uh, well abuse and more abuse and confusion and uh, I mean just a couple of uh, years of just being told to your face that uh, well so you think you're intersex well you're completely wrong on that account you are absolutely transsexual that's you uh-huh I mean and going through that and just being told things. I mean, being told, hey, right from the beginning of obviously that, hey, you're a guy, congratulations. What you see in the mirror is a guy. So you look in the mirror and, well, that's obviously a guy because they told me that's a guy. You um, figure out later, um, as a young adult, that, oh, that was complete uh, nonsense. And you then you do your own research, you're like, oh, well, I'm probably intersex because that makes a lot more sense considering these and these uh, physical markers. And and then the doctors tell you, well, it's completely wrong. And uh, now you're, you're still a guy. And you just have to struggle through that. I mean, even today, that hasn't really changed much. I mean, okay, obviously I got my official uh, gender changed and that's uh, helpful because uh, the number of times that I was just sitting in a waiting room and getting um, some nurse or assistant getting completely flustered because they called me with uh, so was, yeah, Mr. Puss and then <laughs> they're like, that's not a Mr. I mean, it's, no, that's um, no. And I never to explain the, the whole thing again. So that's one uh, surgery in uh, Germany in 2011 and getting some real surgical proof of well <laughs> also the, um, the biopsy and everything like that is real proof no I never was a guy thank you very much getting it changed and that's so far that's still pretty much the most uh, solid bit of uh, proof I have I guess of that uh, well other than my body just um, going to stick in puberty obviously but um, it, I guess in in, <laughs> in conclusion there's still a lot of lots of stuff to work on lots of stuff to figure out I mean um, bustling my own psyche back together um, figure out those traumas and how to work with those and there is obviously the um, the physical aspects. I mean, I do not expect that I will find medical help um, with my intersex condition. I do not expect that I will actually ever get more answers than I have right now. I expect that my body would just keep doing things the way it has been done for a while now. And that's pretty much it. I guess it's just like I'll just it will just continue and I mean 
I've got a whole monthly pain things going on and you kind of track it and uh, I mean it hurts like hell sometimes and uh, part of it is apparently normal because hey congratulations you're a woman and uh, suffering is part of the job description. This is cool I guess. Um, uh, do I have endometriosis? Maybe. Possibly. Yes. Could be. Which would uh, add to the pain. Is there um, fluid just draining into the perineum and causing more um, irritated tissues which then are like we don't like this and then you get more pain? Quite possibly. Can anything be done about that? Um, yes. But I do not expect it to happen. I think that that part is pretty much like... Um, I think that chapter has been pretty much closed. Like the whole medical chapter is just like done. So got the whole psychological processing stuff and um, my expectations are I will get um, I will f get fixed up psychologically through my own efforts and so with a little bit of help from others. I will fix up my life after the, those the past fifteen years and uh, actually start living a life maybe. <laughs> And that's uh, well, obviously write my autobiography, which is also kind of important. So I guess that's really the one major thing that I still want to do with intersex. And after that, it's pretty much like yeah, well, I mean, um, as long as you don't, uh, as long as I don't undress for you, then you will never know that I am intersex. I mean, congratulations here, I am a woman, and uh, that's it. That's how I can live my life uh, for all official purposes and intents it's uh, it's pretty much settled and uh, well I mean I am physically female uh, for all everything that really matters anyway so uh, yeah I guess that's uh, that's going to be it just uh, I mean I will obviously keep vlogging and um, just keep people up to date I will do my patient thing, obviously, and just keep people up to date on the on the whole um, progress on my autobiography and everything. And so maybe some more stuff I write and yeah, see just a uh, new chapter, new life, maybe. <sighs> Would be nice. So um, take care and uh, see you next time, I guess.